right guys welcome back this part is going to be kind of digging into the views we still need to set up our subscription controller controller to match all the stripe integration we need to put in place to get all this work but i think it's going to be more it's going to make more sense to see the views first to see how that all passes through to the controller and then end up in our database and on stripe so why don't we start first with some of the views to get some of this knocked out so we can get things looking like they should so I'm gonna start first on our application layout. We have a basis to begin with that just comes by default with my kickoff library. So it looks pretty plain, but it does the trick. I'm gonna get rid of the footer. I just, I don't have need for it. Just there in case you want it to add one to your own app. Probably get rid of section two. Great, and then there's a few more controls we add to this app that aren't in most. So we're gonna actually have a few helpers that we're gonna use in the views. So why don't we establish those actually first before I dive in. Uh, they will be in our helpers, application helper. This is kind of a, a way to organize your helpers is just based on the model you're using. I'm gonna put some that are just global in the application helper and some that are only referring to that model and that, that model's application helper, or that model's helper, excuse me. So I'm gonna check first if the current user is subscribed. And what all this is, is just basically bundling up some, some logic to see if things are the way they should be and just putting it in a nicer named thing. So like a function. So that's all I'm doing. So current user, Dot subscribed. Cool. And admin, just checking if, hey, are you an admin? And this is gonna just be, first we need to see if the user signed in, and then also make sure that they have admin as true. Question mark is just saying, like for a Boolean, um, it's ba basically, is it true? And if you were to want to do the opposite, you just throw a bang in front of the actual declaration. So this would say if the current user is not admin, just like that. This one is, is it? This one isn't. All right, and then we'll do subscribed. So I just realized I basically repeated this helper. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat it just in case I duplicate it throughout. I'm not sure why I did that, but it's the same thing. And I have one here called Titleize. I don't know that I make use of it, but I think I tried and it wasn't working, but I'm gonna include it just for safety's sake. Oh, I think it was for the actual plan names. I was getting them from Stripe, but they come underscored so I was trying to make them actually like all nice looking, like actual words. Okay, so we'll just leave that as is. Uh, we have a book helper. So we're gonna check if the user added a book to a library. And this stuff just comes about as you're going throughout your views. You might find that you're using a lot of queries to make things appear and not appear and Usually it's best to just bundle those up as something else, like a helper. So here we're gonna check if the user is user and the book is a book. And if there's any there. So we're just querying the libraries on a user model. So if that user has libraries uh, and then where this stuff makes sense and we're passing in the user in the book so it'll make more sense in the view once we get to it then we have a library helper which we don't need uh, pricing helper subscription subscriptions helper we don't need those so okay so with that done we can kind of dig into our application layout finally and it's pretty close to where we want it there are a few things i want to add that makes it a little more extended so the navbar for sure is going to be is dark and that should update pretty quick. Yeah, and then the logo is going to be, has text white. Cool. 
Okay, and what else we got? That's navigating to root. We've got user signed in here. Uh, I added a bit to navbar start. So there's navbar in and navbar start in Bulma. Just allows you to dictate where they are in the nav. And this one's gonna feature, if a user is subscribed, it's gonna have the, the library link. Uh, if they're not subscribed or logged in, basically they won't see it. And this is hooking into our helper we just made in helpers application helper subscribed. So what we want to display is a navbar item and then a link to library index path with a class of navbar item button is dark. We're actually going to make this a block. So with a block on a link to element, you can't pass in the text here, like whatever you want. It's going to give you an error. So you actually need to include it within the block as opposed to the ladder. So we'll do so like this. And mainly I wanted to do it because I wanted to include an icon next to the link. So small little things like that get in the way sometimes. And there's a little quirk where there's not enough space. So I just add some HTML spaces, non-breaking space. And just call it my library. So this shouldn't show. Yeah, because we're not subscribed yet. Cool. And then in our navbar end, we've got everything we need. Um, let's see, this group, we need to add one more block that's gonna be if there's an admin we're going to link to a new book and only admins can create books that's the difference in this app as opposed to others we've done where the users can do more a user can just basically read and download books if they're subscribed so is dark, so we're gonna make that button is dark. So this also shouldn't show, cool. And then all these links need to be dark as well. So let's double check I'm doing this right. We got signed in, sign up. Okay, so for current username, I did another block. So we're gonna pull this part out and do a do, and then do an end. And we'll link to current user dot name, and then we can just check if they are an admin. I'm going to add a little tag just to show that they are one. So admin, another non-breaking space, and we can do a span tag. It is warning the yellow one and we'll just put like admin full caps and we could do an end block there just to do a conditional and it'll be another end we have else sign in so we need to get rid of these are going to be just as is but we're going to put is dark on each So they won't be so ugly. There we go. And then we need one more. That's going to be another link to actual pricing. So this one's going to be pricing, pricing index path. Oops. And bar item button is dark. Okay, so that should be there. It should be public facing and that's fine. So that would go to our actual pricing path. We don't have an index template yet, so I'm gonna add one. We don't have an actual folder yet, so I definitely need to add one of those. Uh, 
pricing and then index. Cool. And for pricing, we use an extension from Bulma and I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna code this verbatim, but you can go to Bulma. This should load, it should just be a blank slate. Cool. It is using the pricing layout though. So let me double check that I have that layout correctly uh, or subscribe, I should say. I think I have something off that's just making that logo appear weird. Yeah, that's what it was. Navbar item needs to be wrapped. And that should make it come back. There we go. Okay, cool. So yeah, um, the index path is going to be an extension to Bulma.io where you go to more on Bulma site and go to Bulma extensions. There's a few plugins that allow you to do things more with the uh, framework. So this one's kind of just a way to do pricing. And I'm honestly going to just go to my other project and copy that over. We'll probably come back and comment out some of the logic just so I can walk you through it. Okay, so I'll do that. Okay, so with that extension installed, we have the base markup, but we still need the CSS. So to get that, you can go back to that. Uh, sadly, I just closed it, Bulma extensions. Uh, go to that. There's a GitHub repo that has the CSS that we need. So I'll grab that and go to GitHub. And the dist folder is probably what you're looking for. I just, I'm just going to get the min uh, CSS and just copy this in. You can put that in the pricing CSS file if you have one. If you don't, you can cre create one. I'll just do that. And make sure it's SAS actually so it gets compiled down. Okay, if all goes good, that should sync up. I need to include tree on our CSS file. This is one little aha that I forgot to actually include in my kickstart project. So we actually need to require the tree. This is part of Rails assets pipeline. So we just make a comment and then a star equal sign require tree. And that just tells Rails to hey go find everything in the style sheets folder and generate some cool CSS. There we go. So this is what I was after. Um, right now I have just links to nothing, so this won't go anywhere, but we're going to add the logic in a bit. In fact, we can do that right now. This will just re end up redirecting a user to a new subscription path, which we'll need to create. Uh, we have the subscriber controller, but we don't have the actual routes and everything set up or the actual actions, I should say. So let's go ahead and make this view a working view. So we'll go to views pricing index, which is where this is at. And we have just basic link to subscribe uh, based on the extension, all this stuff is getting generated and it has uh, is warning or is active class, whatever color you want to use or is link, I should say, uh, to d dictate what color the button is and everything else inside. So let's go ahead and make this one work. And what I do here is a bit of logic on each. First, I check if a user signed in. That comes from device and then we'll end it right after. And then we'll link to a subscribe, but it's going to be if they are indeed signed in, which they should by this step. So the first thing they'll do is hit a sign up form and then they'll be redirected back to this path. If you remember, so then we'll do new subscription path and then a neat thing with rails is you can pass in some parameters. You can make those whatever you want. So I'm going to pass in plan, which is going to be starter for the first one. And then plan ID is going to be an actual credential. So I'm going to grab that. We're going to have to add these so application dot credentials dot starter. And Okay, and then we need to do an else. 
because this is a public facing page, I don't want a user who's not signed in to be able to go through the next page if they're not signed in. So uh, we'll do another one that just says link to subscribe. And then we'll do new user registration path, same class. and then end. So that's how that works. So for each one, we're gonna grab a different plan ID from, that we get from Stripe, mind you, and go ahead and push that through. So this one's gonna be the same. We're gonna call it a different plan. As you can see, I called it bookworm here, and it's the same on Stripe too. Uh, I think it's underscore. Make sure you do the same here. And then one more time. So this one will be a scholar. And scholar. Awesome. So if we go back to the pricing page, uh, we'll just refresh it and you'll see the link go to user sign up because I'm not signed in yet. So this is public facing. This will redirect me here and then I'll still need to actually sign up to do this stuff. So once I do, if I do sign up, and then if you notice these links now become, they'll pass in the new plan, uh, the new plan starter, but you notice we don't have our actual plan IDs, which we need to actually set still. So that would make that link a lot longer if we had them. So I'm gonna do that next to make sure this works. Um, just like before, we can go with our up key and get back to this command, it's a pain in the ass to remember to type, so I'm just gonna do it like this. Uh, and then we'll edit again. And I will do, I need to go to my Stripe products. I made this one already, so make sure you make this first before building this. Uh, call it, if you wanna call it exactly what I do, feel free. You will have different IDs than me though, so bear in, keep that in mind. So I made a book library with three different plans. Let's grab the ID from the starter. You're gonna grab this one right here. And then in this file, we'll just do the same thing. Starter, plan. And then we did bookworm. And then we did, uh, what was it, scholar. So let's go get those. It helps a lot. You can make these with the API. It's a lot easier to make them in the web uh, dashboard if you ask me though. So I guess do what you want to do there. And then let's see, Scholar. Okay, cool. So save that. If you quit that or close that file, it'll redirect you back here and say, everything's been encrypted. And then if we go and save that, I'm gonna go ahead and restart my server for good measure. And my account should persist. I think I should be able to continue to see this page. And you look down there, you can see the plan ID intact now too. So that's awesome. That's exactly what we need. Okay, cool. So the very next part, I'm gonna add the parts of the subscription page where the next page you go to after you click a button is going to be a form in which you see the plan you're going to buy as well as enter in your card info before you press go and, and go ahead and subscribe. So in that one, I will see you next.